So in this video, I'm going to be taking a slightly different approach than most other day trading YouTubers right now. And I'm going to showcase you why my strategy is so good at taking losses. I know kind of weird, right? Most everyone else is talking about how good they are at making money in the stock market. But I believe that the one thing that really separates good traders from mediocre traders is how they are able to manage their losing trades. Because as we know, um, no matter what you're trading, whether it's Forex, crypto, stocks, options, no matter what, you're always going to have some trades that will fail. And it's important that you accept that fact that you are going to have losing trades. And even more importantly, that you are able to just manage those losses and go through the motions of taking those losses, not holding and hoping, not hoping for it to come back, not holding the bag. All those things really tie into like what it means to be a profitable trader because you can have really big profit days and you could show off on social media, but if you can't manage those losses, um, you'll give it all back. So in this video, I have three examples of my past three losing trades uh, from my A plus strategy. Uh, they all fit the strategy very well. They all had really good trades planned in pre-market, but they all ended up failing in quite similar fashions too. But we're gonna break down uh, how I managed those losses and ended up walking away from most of them for pretty much break even. So I can take the trade with massive upside potential and when it fails, I can leave most of them for a very small loss or almost break even. So very interesting stuff. Um, if you're new around here, I highly recommend that you subscribe to get notified of new videos like this. If you have any questions, Drop them down below in the comment section, but let's get right into it. All right, so here is the pre-trading checklist on VVPR. Real quick, if you want access to this pre-trading checklist, you get it at the end of the free trading workshop that I host. First link down below in the bio. Basically, this thing helps you uh, plan out your trades beforehand, helps you just stick to a process of making sure each trade has the correct criteria in place before you trade them. So you can see here, we have a few different criteria that we go by and we just give the stock a score based on how well it fits that criteria. So I'm not gonna break this down too in depth, but you can see VVPR, average daily volume was 1.6 million, flow was 7.5 million shares, and they had news, Vivo Power International announces proposed $250 million Australian distribution agreement for Tembo light electric vehicles. So let's just uh, look at this real quick and kind of break down why I gave each score. Um, sorry if the layout's kind of trash, but it is what it is. So this was back in December. So it was kind of like this, doing this test of this breakout. So we can see over the past year or so, um, it has one main level of resistance. You can see we had this breakout above 15, it ran to 25, but then same day stuffed and it failed on big volume. So you can see that's why I took note in October, it's breakout of 15 stuffed hard. So I just take note of that because it means that there's potential for there to be a lot of bag holder resistance up in that spike area. But see, move on. Obvious daily chart levels. Yes, very obvious levels here. Two main ones. 1025 and then 1639 on the weekly chart we had resistance around 1180s low flow 7.5 million shares decently low market environment is 7 out of 7 this one is because it's an ev stock and ev stocks have been going crazy um, when this ran and basically overall gave the score of 81 out of 100 so it fit my strategy you can see it down here make a plan for it I had an entry planned at 1020 based off of the daily chart level, lock in partial profits at 11.79. So that means my first partial would be at least 16%. And then my overall stop. Now, the way that I plan my stops isn't exactly how this page is structured. My stop here is my overall hard stop because the way that I take my losses, and that's what the core of this lesson is, isn't just having a hard stop, but it's mainly staying in the trade until it breaks your thesis. To kind of explain further what I mean by that, let's just go into the trade on VVPR. 
I had a plan to go long at 1025 based off the daily chart level. My overall stop says 935. See, right way down here, just about where it bottomed out. So that means that I'm taking a partial profit of at least 16% and I'm going to risk about 8%. So just off that, that is a profitable risk reward. It's not the best one to two risk reward. It's barely passing, but it's good nonetheless. I hop in at support at 1020 and I want to lock in partial profits at 1180 and then just wait. So you can see this one, as it tested support, it broke clean through. It got very close to wanting me to stop out, but when a stock is just testing support and it gets to my kind of max loss area, I have this rule called the rubber band theory, where basically when a stock is first testing support, you wanna be very careful on getting hard stopped right away. It's very likely that you'll have a bounce anyways, and you can kind of reevaluate what to do after that bounce comes. For VVPR, I was okay with this, you know, stretching down into 930s because this was just setting up a potential short trap for me. So I just kept holding on. Once it broke over VWAP and it started squeezing towards the high of day, I knew that, okay, now it's in its kind of mode that it needs to break out. It needs to either continue through into the high of day lock in my partials, or it's going to fail and go down to support. So as it crossed over VWAP, I threw my orders to have partial limit cells near this resistance of 1130s to lock in partial profits into resistance, and then it fell back down through VWAP. So this is where you're going to see a lot of these stocks I'm going to show you today. They have this same pattern that just repeats where they had a test of support out of the gates after market open. It ran, but it failed to break out the pre-market highs, and then it breaks below view up again. Most often, these types of trades will end up being all day fades. So let's just kind of progress through and see what happens. So you can see this one had breaking through view up. It's now trending below that important 1025 line that we had noticed. And then from here, you can see it starts to bounce up, reject it. And then it finally has that big snap and then it fades off. So the way that I exited this after it broke back below VWAP was number one, my thesis for this trade was that as long as 1025 holds as overall support, it should try and break resistance. So after the stock had, you know, broken support technically once and it reclaimed, right? Here was one breakdown, fake breakdown. It reclaimed. After this reclaim, if it wants to keep shorts in pain and keep shorts trapped in this, then it cannot, you know, break back below VWAP and it really shouldn't break back below that level of support that it's supposed to hold originally. If it does, then your thesis is no longer in play. Your thesis was for it to hold support, now support's breaking. So for this trade, once it had broken back below VWAP and broken back below my entry of 1025, I'm gonna use previous levels of support as new resistance and sell into that retest, knowing that most of the time, this will be resistance and it's gonna fall further because it was a weak play. So that's the, the main detailed gist of it. Now that you see the pattern on VVPR in depth, I'm gonna just broadly go over LGHL and see once again, have a checklist for it just to show that it did fit the strategy um, LGHL had news. They had news related to Bitcoin, related to crypto. It was a bigger float, 19 million shares. That's why I got a bit lower score, but this one scored overall 78. Decent trade, nothing crazy, uh, but it was a trade that was worthwhile to take. And you can see for this one, I had a plan developed from my strategy um, based off of daily and weekly chart levels. My entry was going to be 475. 
based off the weekly chart. I want to take my first partial profits into the pre-market high, which here you cannot see because each trade blows. Uh, but that pre-market high was around 620. And then overall, I want to stop if it breaks through 420. So basically, in this case, that means that my profit percentage on my partial is 30%. My loss is 12%. And that is a profitable risk reward of 1 to 2.5. So from there, we go into the trade and see how it developed. And you can see very similar price action to how um, VVPR developed, right? It came down, tested support, it broke through a bit lower, but the tested support filled me. And because it had kind of broken through right away, number one, it didn't hit my hard stop. My hard stop was at 420, but even if it did drop down to 420 here, I wouldn't have hard stopped because it's, just testing support, but I would have just thrown a limit sell to sell into the first bounce. But you can see here, never hit my hard stop, so that's fine. It came back up, it broke through, so it, like we had the reclaim of the support. It tested VWAP, and here, what it should have done, like if it was really bullish, then it should have held this area, that 475 test as support. If this was really strong, then it should have reclaimed and held 475. Because if it did that, then you would have a lot of short sellers trapped in this and they would squeeze up and continue up higher, potentially. So once this had reclaimed above VWAP, when it looked like this, I knew it needs to hold 475 or my thesis is broken. Candle closes below 475. So what do I know? I know my thesis is broken. Now it's up to me to have the discipline to know it's time to exit the trade and sell into previous levels of support as new resistance. Sell at 475, you get a good break-even exit on this potentially big profit trade. And you can see this one actually did come back. So even if you missed out on this exit, and for some reason never hard stopped out, it did give one last exit for bag holders. And then last but not least, we have GOVX. This happened just today. And once again, a very similar overall plan, uh, just like VVPR, just like LGHL. So here is the trading checklist I made for Geo GOVX. See, low float, 3.8 million shares. They had news that they got a grant which will help them advance their COVID-19 vaccine. And you can see I gave them a score of 75, not as good as the other two. One main thing was that yes, it's good news, vaccine news is good, but it is pretty late in the COVID vaccine game. Um, vaccines are already out, so if you're just starting to develop it, it's a bit too late. And then also, we're not really in a COVID environment right now. And then lastly, it got docked from having a big resistance from daily chart from back in July up in here. But other than that, pretty good trade. It was first green day with news and it fit the setup. So I took a trade on it and I planned a trade on it. So you can see I had a plan to enter based off of the weekly line chart of 575, take partial profits into pre-market high, at 720, hold the rest for a breakout, stop out at five. I got five from, this was a bit more advanced for my PTA students, but just for a quick sneak peek, take note of where VWAP is on high volume days. It'll be very important sometimes. Um, but anyways, I plan this trade to go long 575 and you know the drill. So market opened up, it pulled back and it filled me. I had fills in the 580s, so far so good. Looking for it to reverse and squeeze into the 720s. And it broke lower. It broke lower, it broke down through 550, but you can see it never broke through my max loss of $5. So it was still overall good. From here, as it kind of reclaimed back through 575, I knew that 
Anyone who's shorted in here is going to be under stress and they're going to want to cover into the squeeze, which could cause it to break out. So I know it's time to prepare my partial profit orders. So I set limit order at 717. And for some reason, I wasn't fill on this. I don't know why. I think it was some just, just, you know, screwed me. But I never got filled on the partial profit order. And then it just dropped back down and halted. So from here, you can see just like DVPR almost, right? Where we had the reclaim, it pushed up, but it never broke out. It failed. And it broke down back below through VWAP, looking very weak. So from here, I knew that as long as 570s can hold, then it could trap shorts again, go for another push through VWAP and squeeze higher. So I had said, all right, I'm going to watch this to keep holding 570s. I never locked in any profits, so it still is just target or stop for me. So either I take a loss at 5 or I take a profit um, into the 750s or when I see weakness. And then we started to see more sides of weakness where we now see the stock is rejecting VWAP. Remember earlier I said, if this wants to hold strong, it needs to get back above VWAP pretty quickly. We had one last rejection of VWAP there. And then here we have, you know, a few large signs of weakness. Number one, it's nearing noon, nearing 12 o'clock. We already had one test of the breakout that failed on really big volume. So not that desirable. And then having it break down through VWAP and then reject VWAP as resistance, uh, that's a weak sign to me. So I chose to sell into that um, level. Now looking back at it, it was kind of preemptive to sell into that because if I was just following my strategy just like fundamentally, then I would have had to wait until support broke at 570. So just to show that that still happened um, soon after, it did finally break through support. And here in this case, even though it still is above five, at this point, it's like, yeah, it's above my hard stop, but what's the point of still being in it? It's past the morning. It's past the time of most volume. It already tried holding support once. It tried squeezing through resistance once. It's falling back down in the afternoon. What's the point to really stay around? So at this point, you would make the choice, say, all right, my thesis has broken. I'm going to exit the trade. So what do you do? You look to sell into previous levels of support as resistance. Where's the support? It's at 575. So you leave a limit sell order there into that level of resistance. And here you can see that perfect exit for break even if you had just followed the strategy and had discipline in the trade. All right. So hopefully this video helps you kind of understand more what it's like to take losses on trades that were really good. They fit the plan, but they just didn't work out. Um, hopefully this kind of opens up your mind on how I do it and maybe helps you understand how you can do it yourself. If you want access to this trading checklist, this pre-trading checklist, click the link down below, get signed up for my free trading workshop and get your trading on fire in 2021, all right? So if you enjoy this lesson, please give me a comment down below. Tell me what you like, what you didn't like, and hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell, all those things. And I'll see you in the next one.